Okay, well, um, we're a couple minutes past three, and uh, we want to use our time efficiently. I think maybe some folks will uh, continue to join in. Uh, so thank you again for coming. As I was saying, I'm John Brandau. I work at Morgan's Division of Research and Economic Development. One of the things I do here is I help manage our university's NIST prep program, which uh, provides opportunities for students, faculty, researchers like yourselves to conduct paid research at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which has some of the most advanced research facilities in the world, some of the top scientists in the world. And uh, if you're interested in grad school, it's especially great because it pays for graduate tuition while you're part of the program at Morgan. Uh, so I hope some of you might be interested in that. But today we're here to talk about the NIST SURF uh, program, the Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship. Uh, we're joined here by Kara O'Malley, the program manager, and also by Dr. Willie May. He's our vice president for research at Morgan and the former director of NIST. Uh, Dr. May can't stay on for very long, but uh, he uh, is kindly here to, to say hello. So um, I might give, uh, Willie, a uh, chance to say a few words if you want to before we get started. Not much I can say, John, uh, except hello, like you said. And uh, folks, I spent 45 years at Morgan, uh, at least at NIST before I came to Morgan. It is a great research experience. It has a culture of openness. Uh, I could not have possibly spent a more productive 45 years. And I urge you all to take advantage of any opportunity that you might have to, to get engaged uh, at, with this. What you find is I found when I was there, almost any topic in science and technology you can think about, you'd have one of the top 10 people in the world right down, right down the hall from you uh, on the campus with you that's willing to, and the culture at NIST is unlike I found elsewhere, certainly not in academia, because there's no competition. Everybody's on the team. Everybody's cheering for each other, rowing together. And it is, I found it, I could not have spent a more productive uh, career than I spent at NIST. And I encourage you all to take opportunities to sort of experience a place through this summer undergraduate research program. That's it, folks. Thanks so much. Um, uh, Kara, I might hand it off to you. We're also joined by Magdalena Navarro from uh, NIST, uh, who actually uh, is part of the reason why we're having today's session. She came to me and said that we really need to promote NIST uh, surf at Morgan. It's it's just such an outstanding opportunity. So thank you. And uh, one of Matt. my long-term colleagues there. Yeah. So much appreciated. Okay, uh, Kara, so uh, the ball's in your court. Wonderful. Thank you, John. And thank you, uh, Willie and Magdalena, for joining us. Um, and Dr. May, thank you for that uh, excellent uh, endorsement of NIST. I feel the same way. It's a very collaborative and unique uh, place to work. I'm going to uh, put my slides over here and start my show. Let's see, are you, are you seeing my slides or are you seeing two slides? Uh, we're seeing the, the presentation view where there are two slides. You're seeing two slides, okay. Mm -hmm. Notes. Yeah. Let me rearrange. What about now? Are we seeing uh, anything? We see your we see your Zoom meeting screen now. Hmm. That's not what I want either. Okay. Let's see.
Are you seeing? Go. Yeah, I think that's that's, that's the view we're looking for. Oh, okay, wonderful. All right, so um, thank you for your patience there. And welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this uh, webinar today. Um, we're here to talk about the NIST Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship or SURF program. Um, my name's Kara O'Malley. I am going to just give you a little brief background about myself and my kind of winding path um, that has led me to become the program manager for the SURF program. I started as an undergraduate at Southern Illinois University and I earned my bachelor's of science in mathematics there. Um, I used that to become a teacher for secondary math, so middle school and high school, um, at which I taught for about 20 years. And uh, during that time I had a family and here's a little picture of what I consider my immediate family, um, my husband, two children and my mom. Um, and so I was trucking along that route for a while and then I decided to further my education and get a, a master's degree in mathematics from Emporia State University. And as you can see there, I was working a full-time job and I did receive some grants to help pay for that. But um, as others have mentioned, if you join NIST, uh, there are some ways to get grad school and your further education paid for, which um, in retrospect, I, I wish I had known about that a little earlier. So maybe that will be helpful to some of you. Um, after getting that master's degree, I joined NIST with the uh, Public Safety Communications Research Division as a mathematician. Um, that's part of the Communications Technology Laboratory at NIST. I was working on statistical analysis for them and developing mathematical models that were used in many of the projects for uh, public safety communications research. And then most recently um, in August, I joined the um, academic affairs team at NIST where I became the manager for the SURF program. So that's where I am now. So a little bit about NIST, um, just for those of you who may not be very familiar with it, um, we are, our mission is to promote US innovation and competitiveness by advancing measurement science, standards and technology in ways that enhance economic security and improve our quality of life. So anything that has to do with measurement or standards or technology that is going to have NIST as a foundational aspect to that work. Uh, NIST was established in 1901 um, with the US as part of the constitution. So um, we've been around a long time and we have uh, a very well established um, place in the federal government. So NIST, is, as we talked about with standards, technology and innovation, um, our role is uh, essential to um, the United States innovation um, and throughout the economic sector from manufacturing to healthcare to defense. Um, really NIST is involved in every aspect of the American experience. Um, our contributions to standards provide the basis for trust for the uh, US consumer. Um, knowing that the items they purchase will fit, they will operate, and they will have the quality that they expect. Um, it's standards, it, our standards impact about 92% of world trade, um, so we have a significant impact in the competitiveness worldwide. So NIST has a very uh, important role in the United States uh, government. We say our greatest strength is our reputation. Here you see a picture of three of our uh, five Nobel laureates um, and some uh, words that we use to describe NIST. To me, the most interest interesting is that we are a non-regulatory agency. So for example, um, recently, well, in 2021, there was a condominium building collapsed in Florida. I think it was called the Champlain Towers. Um, and maybe you have some knowledge of that event. NIST was called in to investigate, um, but we are not um, a regulatory agency. So we are purely about science and about finding the truth and the underlying reasons as to why things are working or not working the way that they are. Um, so we have this unique partnership with industry and academia being non-regulatory. And Dr. May talked about that a little bit, the collaboration um, and the really commitment to excellent science is uh, just inherent throughout every, every part of NIST. 
All right. I'm sorry to interject. I'm, I'm picking up bad habits from Willie, but I just wanted to point out on your previous slide, um, the guy on the far right, Bill Phillips, uh, he was on campus just this Monday, and he gave a great talk on his views on science and religion. And um, I, some of you might have even tuned in. We had we had about 80 people online watching. Uh, on to the left of him, Eric Cornell, also a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, he's given a couple talks at Morgan. Um, and so, and Bill on the right, he actually meets every week on Thursdays with some of our physics majors. He's a university distinguished visiting professor at Morgan. And so uh, we're really fortunate to, to have him, you know, being part of our, our campus and team. And, uh, and also you were talking about the collapse of the condominium in, uh, in Florida. I was also gonna point out that uh, NIST did the definitive uh, study on the collapse of the, the uh, towers on 9-11 and the fellow yes. who, who led that study, uh, Dr. Sean Saunders, uh, earlier this semester, he gave a presentation on how and why that happened. So um, Morgan is developing some great connections with NIST and we're really thankful to have you here today too, Cara. Oh, thank you, thank you, John. Um, and I was not aware of those connections, so I'm glad you interrupted me and, and brought those to the forefront. It's really great to know. Some things, um, so I'll carry on here. The, uh, some things that NIST is really you know, kind of famous for is um, time. We keep track of the time for everyone around the world, um, right? And time is the most measured quantity in the world. So we're, NIST is responsible for establishing and distributing the official time in the United States and our, our internet time service is used around the country um, and virtually by everybody all the time. So um, our, here's a well-known uh, industry business, um, Boeing. Their calibrated equipment is traceable back to the SI, um, commonly known as the metric system, which NIST also is in charge of. So for the United States, so um, right, things that people are using on a daily basis, whether it's just your everyday, you know, wondering what time it is to very high tech uh, equipment and calibration services, NIST is involved in every aspect along the way. So besides joining, uh, when you engage with NIST, besides joining a very highly regarded and world-renowned group of scientists and researchers, you are joining a large community. So your network immediately expands. We have over 3,400 federal employees. Um, I believe we have over 4,000 federal associates right now. Uh, five Nobel winners. Um, our main campus is in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Uh, our next largest campus is in Boulder, Colorado. That's where I am based out of. And then we have connections with other facilities and uh, businesses um, and institutes around the country. On this slide, you'll see our um, laboratories and user facilities. Our metrology laboratories are in blue. And those provide measurements that underpin the international systems, system of weights and measures. Our technology labs in green are for advancing applied measurements and standards. And then our national user facilities in orange, these ensure the availability of specialized measurement capabilities to meet the needs of US researchers from industry, university and government agencies, and in turn, um, accelerate innovation. So I really think of NIST as that kind of triangle between you know NIST, a government organization, and academia and industry. We really facilitate uh, moving things forward among all three groups. Um, our strategic priorities you can see on the screen, these are dictated by the um, administration. So these are our current uh, priorities that are high focus areas for NIST right now. And recently, Congress passed the CHIPS Act, um, the Chips and Science Act. NIST is in charge with um, managing the CHIPS Act. So CHIPS stands for Creating Helpful Incentives to Produce Semiconductors for America. Um, so with that happening, we are anticipating a very large um, increase in semiconductor research at NIST over the next several years. 
So if that's of interest to you, um, NIST is definitely the place to be. So I'm gonna move away from talking about NIST um, and more towards talking about the academic programs and in particular SURF, right? But for us at NIST, it is very important to support the future workforce. Um, a highly skilled workforce is an integral component to uh, the economic strength and security of the United States. So we want to bring people into NIST um, and into these STEM fields. Uh, this is just an overview of many different programs we have at our academic affairs office. So we start with the high school level with SHIP, that stands for Summer High School Internship Program. I know you are not in high school anymore, but maybe you have some friends or family members that are in high school that would like to get involved with NIST. Um, so that would be a way to uh, engage. And then of course, we're gonna really focus on the SURF program today, um, but beyond SURF and many people follow, um, follow up with NIST. So if they join with SURF, they follow up by joining one of these other programs. PREP is for Professional Research Experience Program. Um, that really is for undergraduates up through professional researchers. We have a summer institute for middle school science teachers. And then we have our GMSE and NRC postdoc programs for people who are in the graduate school or PhD areas. Uh, I'm gonna just kind of show these two slides, this one and the next one, with some data about our SURF participants um, this one's from 2018, and then the next one will be from 2021, just so you can get an idea of our demographics. Um, and by the way, this is my first year managing the SURF program, so um, I am looking at these to see what has been done in the past and to see, you know, how I might support the growth and improvement of the program moving forward. So here's one from 2021. Oh, and I want to back up a little bit here. May, you might notice here um, that we have different answers or different totals, uh, but that's because I think when this question was developed, uh, people were allowed to respond with more than one selection. So they might say they were African-American and, and also say that they had more than one race. So that's why we have the difference there. Okay, and then, so here's our 2021 data. Um, this one, I think the question was modified, so it was just check one box instead of being able to check more than one box, and our totals are the same. But this slide shows uh, SURF with HBCUs and MSIs over the past many years, actually from 1993 up to, um, you know, last year. So we have uh, HBCUs, I'm sure you know, is um, historically black colleges and universities, MSI, minority serving institutions. On average, I'm calculating about three SURF participants per year from HBCUs and MSIs, um, and kind of a uh, ballpark average for SURF participants. Um, as you can see, it has changed over the years, uh, but around 150 in recent years. Um, so two from Morgan State, over uh, in two years there, about 2005 and 2022, would really love to see that number increase. Yeah, would it be possible if you can enlarge your uh, pictures a little bit, your slides, make them a little bit bigger? Uh, let's see. Does that help? Uh, no, it went, it went too much. Oh, went too much. A little bit less. How about that? John, how are you seeing them? I can see them pretty clearly. Okay. Um, and I might just uh, add to what Kara is saying is that uh, although historically NIST hasn't uh, always been very diverse, they're making very significant efforts to recruit from a more diverse population. Uh, as part of why we're here today. And I'm you know, happy to say that the majority of participants in the PrEP program, which has been taking off here at Morgan, are people from minority backgrounds. And so I think don't let these numbers make you think that you can't get in. Um, this is what we're trying to change and you can be a part of that. Yes, thank you, John. And Magdalena, are we are we good? Do we want to see the previous slides at all? Were those too small? 
That's good. That's good. Okay. So um, let's see. So to John's point, this next slide is a little bit of a progression, right? And we see that we're working on it. And this actually has now a diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility office, um, you know, to kind of illustrate what John is talking about. We are working on improving our diversity culture, um, among other, other things. So here we see our percentages increasing, but not really reaching the um, same levels as the United States population, which is in my mind, uh, what NIST should look like, should look like the United States and what SURF should look like. To me, it should look like the United States. So we see that about a quarter of all bachelor degrees for um, African-Americans come from HBCUs and MSIs. We, that's why we're here today, to engage you, to help you learn about the SURF program and understand how the application process works, because I am sure we have some excellent candidates in this audience. I would love to help you apply and love to help move you into the program. Um, that's, that's why we're here today, to help you learn about the program and help you with your application process so you can comp submit a competitive application and um, we'll have some people selected for the program. Okay, so about the SURF program now, we'll talk more about that. You see the website up there on your screen. And by the way, um, I've given permission for John to share these slides um, and to have them. So all of these links are active and you can use them if you have the slides. Uh, so we are designed, SURF is designed to inspire undergraduates to pursue a career in a STEM field um, through a unique research experience at NIST that supports the NIST mission. Right, and our, really our three components are working on research, professional development, and having some fun. So we know we're gonna work hard this summer um, and we want people to enjoy that work. So for our research component, some of that will be individual. Sometimes you'll be working on your own. Sometimes you'll be in a collaborative setting working with groups. Um, we will, some projects will be involved in lab work, uh, software development, analysis, that's kind of what I was doing in the, in the lab more. Um, science and engineering, kind of a mix. It's really important to remember that these are real projects, uh, not exercises. We offer weekly uh, seminars for technical experiences. So besides learning about your own project and the work that your mentor is doing, you will learn about the science and research that's happening all across NIST. Um, we also have professional development seminars and a couple of really uh, special field trips. Here's a picture of surf students um, visiting the U.S. Capitol. So if you're on the Gaithersburg campus, that's one that you would get to go on. Um, and then fun, right? So here's some students having a Christmas in July party, you know, kind of a sweater contest. Um, the mentoring relationship and the new relationships that you develop through the SURF program are really fantastic. The mentor can help you while you're at NIST during the summer, of course, but also as you move on through your schooling, as you move on through your career, they can really offer uh, support and you know, help guide you through some decisions that will be ahead. Um, you get to meet the other participants, so you kind of network with your peers and just the NIST staff in general, as um, Dr. May mentioned, is very collaborative and it's really a great opportunity to meet um, people who work at NIST. And you get to visit some new places um, and travel to nearby cities. And we do wanna always keep in mind that safety is a priority at NIST, so that is important. How do you get to participate in the SURF program? So here's our eligibility. Um, you do need to be a United States citizen or a permanent resident. You have to prove that with one of those forms of identification. Uh, there are some educational requirements. So you have to be a full-time undergraduate student at a U.S. Um, two-year or four-year college that's in the U.S. or one of its territories. Um, you have to provide a transcript. Your transcript can be an unofficial transcript. And you have to have at least a 3.0 out of a 4.0 uh, GPA scale. 
We do prefer STEM majors because we are a science and technology organization, um, but there are some opportunities for students who are not STEM majors. And we have kind of some basic requirements that you can see right here. Um, hopefully none of these are, uh, you know, extraordinary or gonna be too much of a hurdle, um, but these are just some organizational requirements. So if you are a SURF participant, you get some financial support as well as the fantastic research experience. Um, we have a $6,600 stipend awarded for your 11 week program. It's a full-time program. So Monday through Friday, uh, 40 hours a week. Um, the specific schedule is really up to you and your mentor. Um, we are gonna be off, we offer a virtual program as well as in-person for folks who are part of the in-person program. We offer a housing allowance up to $4,500, as well as travel to bring you to the campus and then to take you back to your um, permanent address. And then um, commuting expenses uh, while you're there. So if you need help with the Metra or we are talking about some other options for travel or for transportation on a daily basis. Um, so virtual uh, SURF participants would still get the stipend, but they wouldn't get the housing or the commuting expenses. Okay, so to apply, you would go to usajobs.gov. Um, you do need to create a profile. That's fa fairly straightforward. It's basically you're going to, you know, put your name, your email, and your phone number there. Um, and then you'll have a profile, and then you would actually apply to the position on USA Jobs. So we have two announcements there. We have one for Boulder, which is all in-person um, projects. And then we have another announcement for Gaithersburg, Maryland, and that is offering in-person and virtual. So as you go through that process, you will be asked uh, which you prefer, or if you have no preference, there's an option for that. Um, so you can kind of rank those. You could say, you know, prefer one over the other, or really only interested in one, et cetera. Um, the closing date is February 1st, so you want to make sure you get everything turned in by February 1st, um, and then we'll have offers made by April 7th, and the program starts May 22nd. Okay. So these are all the things that need to be turned in for a complete application. So there are some online questions. Um, that's like when I was talking about ranking your choices or your preferences, that's part of the online questionnaire. You need two letters of recommendations provided by references. Um, you will not see those in the application process. You will be giving your references um, like access to submit them on your behalf. You need a resume, uh, undergrad transcript like we talked about, proof of citizenship or US residency, um, proof of health insurance, and a personal statement. Now the personal statement is very important, so I'm gonna go into that a little more on this next slide. So this is your interview on paper. So we really want to hear your voice through this personal statement. Um, we want to tell us why, we want you to tell us why you think you deserve a fellowship. Uh, what have you done that makes you a strong candidate? Have you, you know, tell us about your classes, the experiences you've had there. Tell us about any research experience you've had. Um, have you talked to anybody at NIST about a particular project? Um, and what are your goals? What do you see next for yourself? So, you know, are you able to commit to this 11 week full-time um, program? Are you, you know, interested in a certain research area and so on? So what do you expect to get out of the program as well? So we really wanna hear about your individual point of view when you uh, write that personal statement. So spend some time there. Don't wait to the last minute to do it. Um, put some thought and effort into that part. So Kara, if, a, if a students are looking at the NIST website and seeing the kind of work that researchers do there and they'd like to apply to SURF, is it okay for them to just email them, reach out to them based on their contact information, what they're doing online? Yes, definitely. So um, as they look at, if they look at the SURF web pages, they may find um, more specific information. 
and also just NIST in general. So just note that not every research area has a mentor for the SURF program, um, but they are certainly welcome to reach out to the uh, scientists and researchers and learn more about what they're doing. And, you know, definitely those conversations are very valuable and they can include those in their application, either in their personal statement and or, and or in the questionnaire section, there's a part that asks about, you know, are you interested in any specific areas? So they could talk about that experience there as well. Right. But yes, I highly encourage them to, to research NIST and engage with um, people who are working on the same things that they're interested in. So on this slide, we'll see what the um, application looks like on USA Jobs. So you wanna make sure you sign in because you'll have your profile and then you click the apply button. This next section, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, I might be a little nervous if I was an applicant. Um, it says resumes and documents not accepted. That's okay, just click continue. That is what's supposed to happen at this part. So just go ahead and click continue. You will see this um, happen on your screen. So it's gonna take you from USA Jobs to this Department of Commerce page. And if you look through here, this is where you're going to upload your documents. So you just continue with your application. And then there's a section here for documents. So that's where you will upload your personal statement, your resume, um, you know, your proof of insurance, et cetera, all those things we talked about. And we really prefer that all of these are in PDF form. Um, that's just the easiest for us to organize and to see them accurately. And I wanna make a little note here. Uh, when you click submit, you can change everything on your application except for your references. So please make sure to talk to your references first. Make sure they are willing to write a letter for you, that they have the availability to write a letter for you, um, and that you have their email correct, and things like that. So if you put that information in and it's not right, it creates a lot of um, anxiety and you know, creates some hurdles that we really don't need later. So when you're working on your application, if you're not sure about that, you can save it and come back to it later, right? And once you submit, you can change everything else in your application. You can go back and edit your application, but you cannot edit those references after you su click submit. So just a note of caution about that. And uh, who's who's appropriate as references for the students? Does it have to be a professor? Could it be a pastor? Uh, what, what sorts of information are you looking to get from the references? So for the references, it could be a professor, it could be a, a pastor, a coach, um, a previous employer, or even a current employer. Um, somebody who knows you, you know, and can speak to you, speak about you from a point of view where they can talk about why you would be good in this program. Why, you know, again, we're, why do you, the personal statement was about why do you think you deserve a fellowship? So the reference letter, we want that to reinforce why you deserve a fellowship. So anybody who can talk about, you know, the quality of your work, the quality of your, your demeanor as you approach tough problems. Um, maybe they saw you kind of go through uh, uh, challenging time and how you carried yourself through that time and kept a positive attitude. You know, somebody who can speak to um, just what it's like to work with you, um, whether that's in a formal or an informal way. And then that's, those are all my slides. Um, if you have any questions, we can try and tackle them now, but as you move forward, if things come up, please feel free to email me, um, Omalley at nist.gov. You can also use the surf at nist.gov email. That's on all the application um, information. That comes to me as well. So reach out to me. I'd love to help you get your application in. And I'd love to see some of you in the program um, this summer of 23. Kara I'll, and John, I also want to mention that uh, uh, being from Puerto Rico, have seen uh, many, many different types of students come here. Some of them that went that started and they were very scared about the program. But as uh, they 
talk to uh, their host, they realized how much they were enjoying it. And we had students that came multiple times. And in the past, we even have had students that have been hired once they have completed their academics or their PhDs. And they liked the work so much that they were hired by NIST. So you did a wonderful uh, presentation, Kara. I hope that all the students are motivated and at least to take a, a, a closer look about um, all the activities that NIST does uh, that are so uh, engaging with society and the community. Thank you, Magdalena. Are, are there questions from the audience? Um, yes, sure. uh, I have yeah. one question. Um, you said in terms of transportation and stuff, because you guys are located in Gaithersburg, Maryland, um, how does the transportation really work? Well, we, we don't have that finalized just yet, but the two main options we're thinking about are um, perhaps giving students um, cards for the Metra, and then the other option is perhaps um, like leasing a bus that would stop at the main housing places where students live for that summer and picking up, just kind of having a NIST surf bus. So we're working through those details now. Um, what if the person resides in New York? Like what if I reside in New York or a different state? Then well, I could always do it virtually? Um, if you resided in a different state, you could do a virtual, that's an option, or you could do an in-person, but we'd want you to relocate to the either the Gaithersburg area or the Boulder area, like within, oh, okay. a, within a commuting radius. And then we will give you a housing stipend to do so, up to $4,500 right. to help you with that housing. And then we will help with that transportation expense, the daily transportation expense. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, I'm Howell. I'm a freshman. Um, um, I was like, I saw how you guys were talking about um, like the diversity and how there's more like African American and like students of color. So like, what exactly are y'all doing to make that diversity? Is it that there's more students of color applying or is it that like you guys are like, can you walk me through that? Like how exactly y'all are getting more diversity in the program? Um, sure, I, I can try to answer that. We are First of all, you know, the application process is the same for everyone. And then we verify that um, everybody meets those eligibility requirements, right? So then they um, kind of make that, that cut. The, after that, the reviewers, we have three people look at each application um, and then they score those. And then it goes to, um, the individual laboratories to decide who they select. So among, you know, everybody will be well qualified who makes it to the selection stage. And then there's where we can really um, engage in some diversity, you know, ensuring diversity. Gotcha. So I'm a bio major. So would it be like, would I be able to choose the program, like the research program that I'd be part of? Or is it like they look at my application and put me where they think I would best fit? That's a great question. So we, on the application, there are questions. Um, first of all, if you're in Boulder, on our Surf Boulder webpage, all of the projects are listed, like every single project. So you can, wait, if you apply to Surf Boulder, you pick, this would be my first choice project, this would be my second choice project, and I'm down to six choices. If you apply to Surf Gaithersburg, it's a little bit broader. You look at the laboratories. So you would look at the physical measurement laboratory, the materials measurement laboratory and so on, and you pick your top two. Um, and so then we try to match you with, you know, your first or second choice there. Okay, thank you. Oh, also one more question. So for the, um, like the stipend for housing, so do you guys just like let us choose our own housing? Like, do we do like, with the stipend, like we kind of just figure it out ourselves or is it like dorming or something like that? So we um, have in Boulder, we have one place that we strongly recommend that our surf participants stay there and there's based, but the individual participants sign a contract with that um, housing complex. And then 
In Gaithersburg, because we have a larger number of SERP participants in Gaithersburg, um, we are creating a list of three to four places that we recommend students live there. And that's why we're kind of waiting on that bus. Like if we could get all of our SERP participants at three of those um, housing units, then we could have a bus stop at each of those three places. Um, so you will get the money, we'll make recommendations, um, but ultimately it's the students decide where they're gonna live. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great questions. Thanks. So um, we did get one question earlier in the chat. And then after that, let's go to the folks who have raised their hands. So this was a, can you see that question? Yeah, the, uh, how can I get involved with a research opportunity in the Center for Nanotechnology? Uh, you would apply to the Surf Gaithersburg opening, um, that vacancy, because, and then you would choose our materials measurement lab uh, as your first choice, because the Center for Nanotechnology is um, managing their surf projects within the materials measurement laboratory. Great. Um, Samuel Obiora, if I'm uh, would you unmute yourself? Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask about the GPA. So I'm a transfer student. So I wanted to know if for the at least 3.0 GPA, that's also taken into consideration the past, uh, I was at community college. So does that take that into account also? It's just where I'm at currently, which is Morgan. Uh, we are looking for cumulative GPA over like the past five years. So we know some people go to school and then they have a gap where they're not in school anymore and then they come back. Um, we would like to have like the cumulative GPA for the last five years. So you would submit your transcripts for your previous school and then also your transcripts for Morgan State. Okay, thanks. Excuse me? Um, yes. So you said, um, I want to like um, talk about the grades too. And you said that for like the transcripts and all that, like um, what if what if you weren't in school? Because you said five years. What do you mean by that? Like, So let's say like, let's say you went to school um, in 2015 and you did two years of community college, got an associate's degree, joined the workforce, and then just started going back to school in 2021. You would only submit your transcripts for 2021. Those other ones are too old. They're more than five years old, so we're not really interested in those. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, because because like I don't, I wasn't even in school for five years yet, so. Yeah, I, I, we're trying to think about like all the different possibilities that uh, students might be coming with. Okay, okay. And um, with all of this, are you guys gonna like email us like more information or no? Mm, I, if you emailed me with a question, I would send you more information, but um, I, I don't, I was not planning on sending more information. Um, I, can, I can email you these slides that have all the links. Yeah, um, yes please. Okay, can you, can you email me first and I can reply? That might be easier. Yeah. Um, what's your email? Could you type your email in the comment section? Sure. Yeah. Angel, did you get a calendar invitation from me? Um, yeah. On um, so yeah. just to make it easier, mm -hmm. I'll I'll go ahead and send today's slides out to everybody who registered. And that way you'll all have them and um, so you can have this presentation and the links in it. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Thank you, and I did put my email in the chat for everyone to um, be able to access that. I see Mason's hand up. Oh, yeah, I, well, two big questions. First one is, I saw you all say you're looking for um, engineering. Uh, is there any particular engineering fields you're looking for? Or is this all? It's really all. I mean, we, NIST is the so broad, it's really all engineering fields. Okay. And the second question is, um, so what, what type of research opportunities slash kind of any opportunities I would have at NIST being a um, civil engineer, mainly interested in structural analysis, structural design, 
do y'all have any sort of like research for that or not really? Um, you would really do better looking at the at the NIST website. Um, but did you say structural structural engineering? Yeah, that's what I'm mainly interested in. Yeah, so we definitely have research going on um, in that area. Um, like we talked about the uh, Champlain Towers, we talked about the Twin yeah. Towers, 9-11, like we're, NIST is very much involved in structural engineering. I believe that would be under the um, PML, Physical Measurement Laboratory, is where you will find in more information on that. Okay, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Abby? Um, hi, everyone. Um, my question is, um, I saw that the only eligible student to apply is like you have to either have a permanent resident or like a U.S. citizen. So I was wondering, is it like an international student also allowed to apply or is it just not open to them? Um, it's not, SURF is not open to international students, um, but our prep program is open to international students. So if you're an international student and you want to engage with NIST, um, the prep program is the way to go. All right, thank you. Yep, thank you. And I'll just let everybody know. I'll, I'll go ahead and put a link into the chat with um, Morgan's uh, prep website. Um, excuse me, I have a question. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm blessing. I'll, I'll be graduating this semester. So am I still eligible to apply? Yes. So you're you're graduating like, uh, are you graduating in December or in May? Yeah, December. This is December. Uh, ooh, that, that's a little... That's a little different than what I was thinking of, but I think yes, um, because we do accept the students who graduate in May and then participate so it's the same sequence okay so i can apply yes so on your okay. application put that you're a senior okay mm -hmm. yeah and prep is also open to recent morgan graduates yes. um so if you visit the website you'll see that right now we don't have any positions open and that's kind of because we're in a transitional phase. You know, we completed the first five years and we've submitted our application for the next five years. Uh, we have a very good chance of getting it, but we are we should get confirmation within, you know, the next several weeks. And um, <clears throat> so hopefully uh, once that gets set up, we can start talking with NIST again about uh, additional opportunities coming through PrEP. Mm -hmm. I'm um, sorry, one question. So is the prep paid um, or is it unpaid? Prep is paid. Uh, the pay varies from position to position because it's like applying for a job. Um, so uh, a NIST researcher or scientist will have a research project in their lab and they'll say, I would like to bring someone on to participate in this project. And so they reach out to, they might already know somebody at Morgan, or they might reach out to me and say, hey, can you help us find somebody? And then I'll start looking for people at Morgan and I'll post it to the website. And then depending on the nature of the job and your qualifications, um, the, you'll get an hourly wage instead of a stipend, right? And um, if you're a graduate student, you can get your tuition covered. Undergraduate students, it's just the wages, but um, it's it's really a great experience and a really great way to get your foot in the door at NIST. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Uh, more questions are welcome. Okay, so um, Kara, if if uh, anybody here has additional questions they might want to ask later, I guess uh, they could either email you or that surf at nist.gov. Is that the? Would you want to mm -hmm. put those two emails uh, that slide up once more? 
Sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, can you see it? Yep. Okay. And yeah, so either of those forward. emails is fine. Um, I'd be happy to take more questions. Um, you know, anything that comes up about the program or about the application process, um, or even if, you know, you've heard about the prep program and you're not quite sure, you know, who to direct a question to, you can reach out to me and um, I'll connect you to the right people. Okay. Well, Kara, that was really informative. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to um, be here with all of the Morgan State students today. Yeah, and thank you everyone for coming. We really hope that you apply. Uh, I think it'll be a great experience for you. Thank you. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye.